Good morning, folks. And here's an interesting little story about Ray's lightsaber in Episode 9. And this comes from Phil Sostalk. And this is a user on Twitter. And if you know anything about him, he is Lucasfilm's creative art manager. So he is the guy behind all the design, apparently, at Lucasfilm. And that goes for the art of The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Solo, A Star Wars Story, and The Rise of Skywalker. And he's linking to his book here, or The Art of Star Wars. And the great thing about art books, whether you're making a movie or a game or any kind of story, it's always great to be inspired. And you do that with having really talented artists showcase their work. It gets the writers inspired. It gets the actors. It gets everyone involved having a good idea of what things look like. So no matter what you think of the sequel trilogy, there's amazing artwork behind it. And this is all just gorgeous stuff. It's sad that a lot of this emotion and inspiration didn't get translated onto the screen or onto the page or wherever the medium goes. But you can see where it's coming from. And it's looking, it looks really neat. Like everything about these shots are, are great. Uh, there's some, uh, there's some inspiration. There's some meaning behind everything. And that doesn't always get translated, unfortunately, to the final product. A lot of these shots uh, look pretty barren here or sterile. And we're not sure what the, the point of that room exactly was. Was it a, a science room? Did it have to be all white? Uh, why is Kylo's Ren's uh, helmet off? that sort of stuff. So some of it got through. Uh, some of it wasn't as uh, action-packed, especially when you don't know the motivation of the characters and why they're behaving the way they're behaving, uh, especially the scene with the uh, the water. Uh, it seemed to be a very dangerous, very pivotal moment of the story, and it was, but it wasn't as dangerous. It wasn't as exciting. It wasn't as dramatic as it should have been. And I'm not going to go into the details of why that is, but either way, uh, this is an interesting book, and there's other books on there, but I'll link to that in the description if you want to check that out. And it's getting some, well, not bad reviews, three and a half stars. It's interesting because there's no mention of Palpatine or no designs of Palpatine in this book. And this was delayed for months as you know the movie came out in December. So a lot of people are like, hey, wait a second. Why was this book delayed? Where's Palpatine? How did this come about? And the assumption is, well, they threw Palpatine together at the last minute. There was no need. There was no need to design Palpatine. It wasn't a, a long thought out concept. It was rushed, which is what most people think. So anyway, the whole story is about Phil mentioning a guy named Matthew Savage, and Matthew Savage has an Instagram and an IMDb, and he's been in the art department of all kinds of movies and shows like The Batman 2021, the Halo TV series 2021. The Witcher TV series, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Alien Containment, uh, Night Flyers, Solo, Episode 8, American Assassin, etc., etc. So he's very good at what he does. He gets all these big contracts. Good on him. And Phil here is linking to his Instagram. So it wasn't needed in the end, but we did design the inner workings in Kyber Crystal Cage for Ray's lightsaber, drawn before we knew what color the blade would be which is cool. So here is the design of Ray's internal workings of the lightsaber. Uh, here's an animation of that whole thing coming apart, which is very cool, very technical. Uh, there's no mention of kyber crystals in episode nine at all. Couldn't even, couldn't even remember anything of that. So there's the actual prop. And it's fully functioning. That's pretty darn cool. If you go to the rest of his page, uh, they have other props and other designs. Just very technical, very cool looking stuff. There's the the staff of Ray's and they, he wanted to design it. Ray's lightsaber from the Rise of Skywalker prop. Prop master Jamie Wilkinson always said, if we ever get to design a saber for Ray, we made from elements of her staff the prop she had used since we first met her. And... Here's more animation, how that worked. Again, very cool looking stuff. There's the scene from the movie. Comes out of nowhere. <laughs> but, but very technical, very interesting, beautiful looking designs. F feels like 
it's this is what the world should have been like. There's one more thing to say. The lightsaber is going to be in more than just one shot at the end. There is going to be a subplot throughout the film showing Rey working on it at her bench using the Jedi text as a guide. Now, I think we've all would have appreciated Rey actually struggling to do something or working on something. Unfortunately, what we got was Rey having at least two lightsabers. There was the repaired one of Luke's, which I don't know how she was able to do that or how she got the parts or how she was able to salvage it while she was running away at uh, near the end of episode eight there. It's like, oh, I'll just pick up these pieces. Like, what, when, when how? <laughs> so she somehow managed to repair Luke's. She then ran away to uh, Octo and found Leia's lightsaber. So apparently, uh, after getting these two other lightsabers, she was building her own. So you're like, how many lightsabers does this girl need? What was the point of all these lightsabers? And then she just buries them in the desert on Tatooine near the end and then reveals her golden one, which means as, at best a symbol that she's now complete. She's now found herself. She's She knows what's going on. I don't know. That, that could mean many things. This is the problem with the movie. It's, it was smashed together with all these ideas and elements not clarified as to what they meant. So you could uh, speculate as to the the value of the golden lightsaber, the golden blade, the kyber crystal, what that was all about. I wish I could tell you, but a lot of missed opportunities with episode nine. Actually, the whole trilogy was a lot of lost opportunities, but you could definitely say the artists knew what they were doing. They drew some amazing stuff. They created some amazing props, and I think they're gorgeous, but that's just my taste. Thanks for listening, guys, and have yourself a great day.